Hello everyone, welcome to the video, and thank you for joining in. Today I'm going to be talking about the Ohio State 2020 football schedule predictions. The Buckeyes had a great season last year. They went undefeated during the regular season. They won the Big Ten Championship game, and they ended up eventually losing to Clemson in a great back-and-forth game of the Fiesta Bowl. Overall, they went 13-1, and and to a lot of people, that was surprising because they had a new coach, um, Ryan Day, came in after Urban Meyer, and filling Urban Meyer's shoes obviously wasn't an easy thing to do. Um, you know, they had a lot of changes, um, some you know, new assistant coaches as well, a lot of new guys coming in, uh, obviously their quarterback, Justin Fields, um, he had just entered the transfer portal from Georgia, so it was, it was going to be his first year at Ohio State, uh, but the Buckeyes did fan absolutely fantastic um, in their first year under Ryan Day as head coach. He did coach a few games as head coach the year before that as an interim, um, but Urban Meyer took over uh, later in the season after uh, Meyer served the suspension. Uh, but anyway, it was a great year last year for the Buckeyes. They had a lot of talent. They are losing some of that talent. I talked about Clemson and how they're not losing much talent. Uh, well, the Buckeyes are losing um, some talent. Most notably Chase Young at the defensive end position and Jeff Okuda uh, at the cornerback position. Those will probably be the second and third picks in this upcoming NFL draft this year. That says it all. Those are two... the two key losses. They're also losing some guys on the offense, uh, most notably J.K. Dobbins at running back, one of the best running backs in all of college football, and I believe they're losing K.J. Hill, one of their wide receivers as well. But the good thing is they're still going to have a top five recruiting class, and they're going to have plenty of weapons that are still younger. So they're still going to have a lot of younger weapons. Uh, you know, you have Chris Olave coming back. Um, Fleming at the water receiver position. He's going to be a freshman. He's coming. He looks like he might be very good. Um, they have Garrett Wilson, I believe. I, at tight end, I believe they still have Jeremy Ruckert. And at the defense, you know, they're going to have a lot of holes to fill there. But they have a new defensive coordinator. They can start fresh. Uh, so, you know, defense might be weaker, but they still got a lot to look forward to overall. Um, looking at the schedule, just at first, you can tell, obviously, there are a few tough games on that schedule. Not all of those, um, seem like very easy games for the Buckeyes, especially the away ones, um, early on. Uh, I'm gonna get into it right away. Um, I'm gonna break down every game, and at the very end, I'm gonna give my overall record prediction. So one's Bowling Green. This is the cupcake game for Ohio State. It won't be a hard game. Uh, week one, they'll win this game very easily. Um, week two, so big game here. Huge game against Oregon. Probably will be a top five ranked matchup. This is a huge game. Um, big playoff implications, although there's still a good shot that both of these teams could get into the playoff. It is an away game. That's the tough thing. It's an away game. The Buckeyes have to go all the way to Oregon this upcoming season. And it's going to be tough. You look at Oregon, they have a fantastic defense. Their offensive line with Penny Sewell is pretty good. Their one really big weakness is the quarterback position, losing Herbert. He's an experienced quarterback. Uh, but they've got some decent young quarterbacks. They have a pretty good coach. Um, which is good for Oregon, and they have the home field advantage. So all those things definitely help Oregon the situation. Obviously, talent-wise, Ohio State um, at the quarterback position and at the wide receiver course still might have the the edge there. Maybe not on the defense, but in, in most of the offense, they have an edge. So I think this one's going to be very close. It's going to be very exciting. I'm very I'm very excited for this. It's probably going to be the college game day. Um, location for that week, and it'll probably be the Saturday night football game. That'll be my guess. It's probably going to be the best out of conference game or non conference game, I should say, um, all year. It's going to be a tough one. I do give Ohio State the slight edge in this one. I think I think it'll be close, but I give the Buckeyes the slight edge. All time, they have not lost to Oregon before. Number three, Buffalo. Another easy game for the Buckeyes. Uh, this one will be a very easy one. Uh, they'll win this one by quite a lot. For Rutgers, uh, I believe Rutgers now is Greg Schiano coming back uh, at head coach, so that might help. Uh, but still, it's Rutgers. It's a home game for Ohio State. This won't be that challenging. They win this game. 
So at worst, we're looking at that stretch, the worst they could do in that four game stretch would be three and one realistically. And that's if they lose to Oregon. Um, and I still think they have an edge in that one. Five week five is the bye week. That's kind of tough. It's kind of early on in the season, and it's right before a tough stretch. You kind of wish if you were an Ohio State fan, that would be in the middle of that stretch. Iowa. So Iowa was pretty good last year. I was known to be a very good home team, not necessarily a great road team. That's the thing with Iowa. They're known to be a great home team, not a great road team. This one's going to be a home game for the Buckeyes. Uh, I was losing probably their three best players. They're losing Nate Stanley at quarterback. They're losing Tristan Wirfs. Um, he's going to be gone. And they're losing AJ Espinessa. Those are three very um, good football players that are leaving. So their three best players are leaving. Um, you know, whether they're a ranked team or not when this game happens, they could be. It's a home game for Ohio State. The last time Ohio, Ohio State played Iowa, I believe they lost. That was that blowout game a few years ago. So I'm sure they're going to be, um, you know, any guys at least who are on that team are going to be hungry for revenge. Any guys who are freshmen then. Uh, so I think Ohio State wins this one big. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be much of a challenge. At Michigan State. So, you know, before you know, the offseason started, I thought it could definitely be a great challenge for Ohio State, but with, with everything that's been happening for Michigan State, I don't think um, that they're going to be very great next year, just in my opinion. they're lo Obviously, they're losing Mark D'Antonio, um, who just, one of the, you know, one of the best co coaches in Michigan State history, um, definitely probably a Hall of Fame coach, um, just you know, incredible coach there, engineered so many great upsets over the years that he was there, so many big wins, couple Big Ten championships, um, a Rose Bowl win, um, you know, the whole thing, he's he's done a lot for Michigan State, and le him leaving is going to hurt them a lot, in my opinion, they went only 6-6 six and six last year, and him leaving is going to hurt a lot, their recruiting class is okay, I believe Mel Tucker's the new head coach, he was a former head coach at Colorado, but you look at their talent, it's not that great. Um, you know, I feel bad for Michigan State, actually, because they have the toughest schedule in all of uh, college football, I believe, this upcoming season. So, you know, it's going to be tough um, for Michigan State to do very well next season. They could very well not even be bowl eligible. I have Ohio State winning this one pretty big. At Penn State, this this and Oregon, obviously, are the two big games. Both away games. That, that This is going to be a tough one. In the whiteout. Now Penn State did lose some did lose some key players, most notably KJ Hamler at the wide receiver core. That's gonna that's gonna hurt a lot. If you look at their offense, Sean Clifford, I, you know I think he's an okay quarterback, not anything too special. Um, but his really only huge weapon to throw to is Pat Fryermuth now at the tight end position. The wide receiver core overall is not great. Um, they've got a good run game still, the main lines, and they've got they've got a pretty good defense. The last time Ohio State came to the whiteout, they only won by one point, and the the last time before that, they uh, lost in a close one. So these Penn State Ohio State games are close. This one's gonna be exciting. Ohio State won by 11 last year in the in the uh, horseshoe. I still give the edge to Ohio State. I would imagine they would be favored. Uh, just I think the wide receiver core is a little bit weak for Penn State. That might hurt them. But, you know, they still got a good run game of defense. They can definitely make it competitive. I think it will be like a one-possession game. But I have Ohio State slightly with them. Nebraska. Uh, so, after coming off that three-game stretch of Iowa at Michigan State and at Penn State, Nebraska might be a little bit of a challenge. They, they, they might be tough. They might be like a possible trap game. They they might give Ohio State a challenge. You know, last year obviously was a blowout. Ohio State went to Nebraska. Many analysts were picking Nebraska to win, and it was a complete blowout. Uh, we'll see what happens this time around. I still have Ohio State winning it. Um, I think maybe by like two touchdowns, but it is a tough stretch that they would be coming off of, but still, it's a home game, and I don't think Nebraska has great talent, so, just in my opinion. Indiana, Indiana had a fantastic season last year, obviously, they went 8-5, and five. great season for them, uh, you know, in the Big Ten, they had to face a pretty tough schedule, they had to play Ohio State, they had to play Penn State, they had to play Michigan, those were three of their losses, this upcoming season, they're gonna have to play those three again, and they're gonna have to play Wisconsin, um, you know, I just don't see 
Indiana doing as great this upcoming season. I think the the tough schedule is probably going to hurt them. They might get a few injuries. They might be banged up. Uh, so I think Ohio State wins this one by a lot at home. At Maryland, um, listen, the last time Ohio State played Maryland, they struggled quite a lot. Maryland nearly won that game. It was crazy. They need, oh, they were a two-point conversion away. They had a man wide open in the end zone, and the quarterback just missed the throw. Um, so that was a great game. Last year's game, though, was not. That was a complete blowout. I remember watching that game. It was a complete thrashing. That was probably Ohio State's biggest blowout of the year. It was not competitive whatsoever. Um, they probably were, you know, it looked, seemed like they were angry at Maryland for, you know, only for challenging them the year before. Uh, it was, you know, it was just a complete blowout. This upcoming season, listen, it's an away game for Ohio State, but when you look at the talent Maryland has, it's not very good. I believe they are getting one of their, one of the best wide receivers in the nation for, um, 2020's recruiting class, so I guess that's good. Um... But besides from that, there's not much talent they have. So I have Ohio State winning this one out a lot. At Illinois. All right, this is the game that's the biggest trap game, obviously. This is the game I've, I'm worried about for the Buckeyes. Illinois obviously upset Wisconsin last year. And they beat Michigan State after a, in a huge comeback. They were down 28-3 and up winning. So, from what we've seen, Illinois has the potential to upset a good team. Now, you look at where this is. It's right before that Michigan game. And Ohio State obviously prepares for Michigan all year. They are always looking forward to that game. From week one, they're, they're excited for Michigan, obviously. That's the ultimate goal, to beat Michigan. They can't lose to Michigan. They just That's how it goes in Ohio State. So, you know, the one thing I worry about for Ohio State is if they're looking maybe too ahead. Last year, they weren't, they weren't able to do that because they had Penn State that that week before Michigan, so they didn't really have to look. They didn't really look ahead. They focused on that game. Um, but this this season, they might be looking ahead to Michigan and might not, you know, prepare for Illinois that well. That was at least what you know happened with Maryland a couple years ago, where they almost lost that game. So you know, this could potentially be a trap game. The overall talent tells me Ohio State, but I think this could be a close one. I think maybe by like a touchdown, Ohio State wins. I think Illinois will give them a challenge. Michigan. Michigan's the, besides Buffalo and Bowling Green and maybe Rutgers, Michigan's the biggest guarantee on here. They're probably the, besides Rutgers, they're the biggest guarantee out of any Big Ten game. It's in the horseshoe. Michigan hasn't beaten the Buckeyes in the horseshoe, horseshoe since I think like 2000. It's something like that. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, I have uh, Ohio State dominating Michigan in this game. I don't see it being close. The last time they played in the horseshoe, it was domination. Last year, in the big house, it was domination for uh, the Buckeyes over Michigan. It just, it's, it used to be close when, you know, between Meyer and Harbaugh, but now it's becoming not even close. They're blowouts. I mean, the first few matchups were exciting. I remember, um, like, I think it was like four years ago, uh, that Ohio State Michigan game that went into like double overtime that was fantastic but that just doesn't it, the last couple of years it's been blowouts uh, so that's unfortunate for Michigan I think Ohio State wins this one very easily uh, so yeah overall I have the Buckeyes going 12 and0 so same as Clemson they go 12 and0 this would probably be enough to get them the one seed because I don't have any teams besides Cle Clemson. Um, in Ohio State, um, going undefeated, uh, you know, I just feel like the SEC, there's too much competition for each team, I feel like every team will slip up in there, the Big 12, a lot of the good teams have tough road stretches, and the Pac-12, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a weak conference, and their best team, I think, is losing to Ohio State, like I said, um, you know, there's a very, there's, there's still a Good shot that Ohio State could slip up in one of those games. But the worst I see them doing is 11-1. and one. Um, That's reasonable. If you were to say they go 11-1, and one, I still think they win the Big Ten Championship game, obviously. And I still think if they go 12-1, and one, they're going to be in the playoff next year, no matter where they slip up. Unless it's like Buffalo or something, or Rutgers. If, if, as long as they make it close, um, you know, and they get the job done against the big games like Oregon, Penn State those games, Michigan, they'll be fine.
So overall, I have them going 12-0. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you for joining. I do appreciate it. And please make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and I probably will come out with two of these tomorrow. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. Thank you for joining in.